Morning guys. Morning Melanie. Good morning everybody. Melanie is doing some very beautiful work with the palette blanks I gave her. She has made here a flower. This just means more work for me. Now I've got to take them out and varnish them. She's got here. This is going to be really nice. I can't wait for her to finish this one. Yeah. Got a rose. Here she's got another flower. And this one covers the whole palette blank. Yeah. There's a different one. So Melanie's really experimenting with these. And uh, there's a smaller one. I don't know if you can see them very well in there. Yeah. She's hand drawing them with pencil. And now she's doing the off-grid project. She's got a stack of off-grid project blanks. And she's... Um, oh, there's another flower. So she has to switch the tips in between different types mm -hmm. of uh, work. So she goes through and, and uh, does them. She's very talented. <laughs> Alright, I've got to go back outside. We had to go to town thanks to YouTubers who told me that PVC pipe cannot be used for um, hot water. Although at the hardware store he did reconfirm and said again, yes it can. People do it all the time, but it doesn't say so on the pipe. So the ratings are lower than what the uh, ratings of the water I'm going to be pumping through it is. So I bought some... Um, three-quarter inch pe packs and some fittings. Good news is it's going to pop together pretty easily and uh, it's flexible. So I'm going to get on out there and start working. Hey everybody. Out here in the greenhouse I've got my all my new fittings together and I took off the PVC fittings from the old Sears wood boiler wood stove water boiler and I'm putting on some uh, three-quarter inch PEX shark bite fittings I um, don't have the clamp for this size I don't think I didn't wasn't sure when I was at the hardware store so I spent a little bit more money and got the shark bite rather than spending the $89 on a, uh, a clamp that'll fit the uh, crimp on connectors because I wasn't sure like I said so these are plug and play and removable sounds like a military helicopter going over So we'll get these on here and uh, very soon we'll have this all together. I've got everything I need now to make this happen. I think we should be boiling water today on this system. So there's that. Now. I'm still just trying to decide if I'm going to take the feet off that or not, off that stove. I really hate to have it sitting so close to the ground. The rise, you know, I'm going to check the rise on that. You guys can tell me what you think. We've got, we're going to go from, I'm going to go from center of the pipe. I should go to the ground. We've got from 4 inches to 11 inches. So we've got... Uh, six, yeah, ten and a half. So we got a six and a half inch rise on that uh, cold water. Now, there's going to be some pressure from two water drums, but is it going to restrict flow when it has to go upwards a little bit? I don't know. I can drop it if I take off the legs of the stove. I can change that rise by about four inches and that'll give me only a two and a half inch rise. I'm wondering if I should do that. Take those legs off and lay that down on bricks. The bottom of the stove doesn't get that hot anyway so there's no danger of anything catching on fire if I did that. I'm seriously thinking I might have to do that. Drop it over, take off the feet, and lay it on, uh, flat on the ground, 
and then I'll have more pressure. The idea is to have pressure for that thermal siphon to work, for that water to push itself back into the stove. So yeah, I think I'm going to do it, if the feet will come off. I got the wood stove sitting on the ground, on boards for now, I have to go get bricks. And I've got my uh, pipe fittings in here. I just finished gluing this up and I've got my piece of PEX measured to fit here. I'm not putting it in yet until I figure out this top part. Now I want to come down. I don't want too much of an angle because this is going to be the filler neck and obviously I want it to be able to fill it. This is just resting on here for now. That's a very loose fitting. It's not a very good coupling. So I'm going to get a piece of PEX and obviously it can flex some and I've got to put in the I've, I've threaded these all together and prepared my adapter pieces so this goes here so I've got to glue this into here I guess I can go ahead and do that glue this on there and let it sit up and then and come out this is relatively stiff so I don't want to have too much of a bow in this so I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that with the filler neck right now I prefer to have this like this, and then a little 45 degree turn. So I've got to do some thinking here and how I want to make this work. Because otherwise, if that's lower than the top of the tank, I'll never get that filled. So, giving a little bit of thought as I, uh, as I work here. Make sure I do this upright. Did you? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think you could see. I was working on this top fitting here. Is what I was talking about. So I don't know if that's gonna um, see what I'm looking at here. There's a loose fitting up here. I want this to be parallel so I can fill the the barrel. I don't want to have it hanging too low because then it'll never go higher than the lowest point in this T. And that would be a loss of a lot of potential fluid in the drum. But I don't want too much pressure on the PEX fitting either. On the PEX pipe. So I'm trying to give that some thought on how exactly I want to do this right now. A little bit of a slope, it won't be too big of a deal. So I think I'm going to cut a piece of pipe and see how it's going to look. Now down here at the bottom, I'm feeling much better about that. Let's almost straighten at the bottom now, so we won't have any pressure loss there. Now my biggest issue is up at the top here trying to get this connected, so I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to think about it a bit. I think I've got it everybody. I just reversed my T in my elbow. The elbow is the filler, and the tea goes on down to the wood stove. And it's just going to go on up and into the water tank. I think I've got it. So, we'll be burning soon. Of course, then i got to put a hole in the ceiling and get the uh, um, stove pipes through there. Um, I decided to keep the stove in here for this winter and work around it for now. I can always redo that. Um next year but right now I absolutely need to get this uh, going here so yeah it's gonna work now future what I'll end up doing probably is just moving those two barrels to a different position if I expand right now I'm not gonna be able to expand right away with the wood stove in here but the wood stove is gonna be pumping enough heat well maybe I won't have to in the end Let's see how things work out anyway. Let's see. But I really want to have that 4x4 four four foot area as a grow bed area. So uh, the stove takes up space regardless. But I think I've got it figured out. I'm going to glue these pieces together up here and snap in the last two pieces of PEX. And then we've got to run and get some water from the creek and pump it in here and we'll be in business here today. Alright guys, I got the stove connected 
I've got the pipes connected. I um, had a little issue with the hex. Uh, didn't want to flex, and so it turned my fitting, which was perfectly straight and beautiful. So it is what it is. It's permanent now. When I put on the PEX, this fitting here wasn't perfectly cured inside. Uh, the glue wasn't perfectly cured yet. And the PEX put enough pressure, because that was that loose fitting, you remember, to twist it so that's not straight. There's nothing I can do about that. But I have a complete and fully enclosed system. So I'm letting that cure. And while I'm doing that, I'm working on the stovepipe. Now, unless I build an adapter, which I may have to do in the future. The stovepipe is upside down. This is an antique stove. Maybe they had different pipes back then. I don't know. But the pipe only fits on this way. It is an oval shaped six inch pipe fitting. And the pipe fits loosely, a little bit loosely, around the outside after you've mashed it down to an oval shape. There probably was some kind of a fitting or adapter on there back in 1890 when they made this. I don't know. I have to do what I can do with what I've got. So the only thing I could possibly do for the future would be to take a half pipe. No, I can't. wouldn't work either. How would I do it? I'd have to cut a pipe in half, taking off the crimped end, and then turn around the entire um, chimney pipe. But right now, I don't have the leisure, the time, or the money left for that project. Well, it would take me time more than anything. It's, the pipe is only a few dollars, but i got to get this running before tonight and get these tanks filled and heated or I will lose everything. So I just don't have the leisure of playing around right now on this. Anyway, um, I still also have to secure those barrels and keep them from falling down. They're still just propped up. And once that's full, I'm not going to trust these pipe fittings from stopping those barrels from falling on the wood stove. But we have a good start at a uh, greenhouse water boiler heating system. A really good start. It looks sort of cool, too. Once I paint those black, it'll be even better. Um, but that can only be done on uh, 50 degree and above temperatures, which we don't have at this time. The thermometer oh it's showing 53 degrees right now in here although I'm wearing a coat so that can't be anyway I am going to put the hole through the roof I've got the hole drawn out I hate going through the roof but you know I gotta do what I gotta do right now in the future if I ever want to patch that up I can just slip a piece of metal underneath overlap and over and screw it down and be done so it's not a big deal to fix it and patch that back up but Anyway, I'm going to get that hole through there. I'm going to go get my drill bits and drill and protective eyewear and uh, start cutting. Hi everybody, Troy and... Melanie. From where? I'm the Hoyt Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. You're getting it! <laughs> and... And? Off... Off your channel? Off grid homesteading with Melanie. Yep, and TR Tech Tactical where we do outdoor camping, sports, and survival. Melanie has a bunch of videos that I have to process for her on her own channel, but um, I'm really swamped right now with outdoor work. I'm not indoors much at all, even after dark. So we have a card type thing here in the mail. Between uh, website work, video work, and outdoor work, we have been busy. Happy holidays. So, it's from Teresa. It says here in the card, many good wishes for the season and the coming new year. Hope this finds you both well and Chris doing better. Enjoy your videos. Hope that you all have a blessed Christmas and a happy new year. And that's from Teresa. Well, thank you. Thank you. We'll pass that on to Chris, too. Chris is not well right now, but he's he's not... We've seen him worse. He's, uh... This is beautiful. <laughs> so, we got a box here in the mail. Felix, if you don't mind. 
Oh, by the way, let me grab Felix. I'm gonna grab his head, okay. Felix, pick up the box. Felix is a cute cat. Felix the cat. Um, I, we had a bit of a medical emergency and we took Felix in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had an anonymous donation, and you probably know who you are, about, uh, was a week or two ago. It was about two weeks ago. Felix has been um, back from the doctor a week now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he had some problems, and he couldn't go to the bathroom. So we took him into emergency and uh, got him fixed up. That and a couple other things that we were able to fix with the help of that donation. So we want to say thank you very much. Thank you very um, much. I do believe God works behind the scenes in ways that we don't know and makes things happen because uh, we were able to come through a couple um, crises at that time. And saving Felix is extremely huge to Melanie. Well, I would be devastated too, but he follows her around all day. And he sleeps with her. Every, everything she does, he's there. He loves her so much. And uh, to lose him would be sickening for her especially. <laughs> he's special too. Um, it's it's hard, to, baby. hard to catch it on video because he's so active. But he'll look at like a baby. <laughs> um, he has this toy mouse that you throw and he'll go fetch it and bring it back to you. And... Uh, he actually brings it to you and asks to play. Hopefully I get get that on video one day. Um, Baby Cat is not on the video as much because she's lazy. Uh, she's sleeping more and more. But cats generally sleep 16 hours a day and Felix only sleeps at night. <laughs> and he's special. Besides little cat naps here and there. So, yeah, he's worth it. Melanie needs him, I think, more than... More than he needs her. Mm -hmm. So, you need a, a knife. Uh, there's a knife. Is that the Ontario? No good. The Ontario is deadly. So this is to Troy and Melanie and Chris. And Chris is not well at this time, so whatever's in here for him, we'll take to him later. in the front. Holiday time. Oh. oh, it's a door panel. You can show that to the camera. And there's a card for Chris, and there's a card for Troy and Melanie. So we'll give Chris his card later on. Let it snow. Let it snow, let it snow. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We'll just say from Brenda. Well, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Is there a name for on it? For Troy. Oh, for Troy. Signature gold. Looks like nice warm socks. Heavy weight boot socks. Perfect timing for the winter season. I'm still hunting, by the way. I'm going out tomorrow and it's going to be a maximum of 16, 20 degrees. That's going to be nice to have. Troy. Mm -hmm. Oh. What do you got? We each got one? Chris. Oh, there's Chris. Okay. Mm -hmm. Put that over here. And Melanie. And Melanie. All right. Aw. Thank you. 
Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, sand dollar. This is a, um, says the legend of the sand dollar. No, Felix wants to play. No. Look here, Melanie. Oh, thank you so much. Melanie? And inside, you can hear it rattle. Oh, really? Yeah, there's things inside. It's a real sand dollar. I love <laughs> these things. Those are so cool. Look, it's so beautiful. Thank you. And there's a um, stand that was attached to this. Well, Felix really wants to be involved. So here's a little stand that was attached to the bow to stand up my sand dollar. Oh, Isn't that okay. cool? Put one here. That's yours. Put yours over here. I got Chris's pile here. What's this? For Troy. Rated keychain. For Chris. Okay, we'll put that over by Chris. Oh, Felix <laughs> wants to be involved. <laughs> the Felix. There's so a. What is it? There's something. A metal. Oh, it's like a duck. It's a. Show them up close. It's a braided keychain. It looks like a duck. Uh, the thing on it. <laughs> well, thank you. We got Melanie. We'll I have a lot of glitters. Felix is gonna love you here. Uh, Melanie's oh, been. Thank you. Show her the show the bottle. Thanks. Did you show you didn't show the bottle? No. On video. I have something to show you. Melanie is really getting creative. Yeah, you hold it here. Let me mm -hmm. see that one. Melanie's taking old soy sauce bottles and making them into works of art. Mm -hmm. Felix wants to be involved. Oh, there's one for Chris. The socks, I see. I'll pull it out and put it aside. Chris got some warm socks too. That'll be happy for him. What's this? Make it, make it. The original, make it and bake it. Oh, it's a um, joy making kit with little plastic beads and you put it in the frame and you bake it. A little jewelry making kit. You, Why are you bake it in the oven. That's that melts the plastic into the um, metal framing. Really? Yeah. There's a Susan Boyle free gift. Um uh, I have no idea. I'm not familiar with her by name yes, but not by music, so we'll have to check that out. I'll put this that in is later. Yours, my love. Uh we have oh I Cold weather grips. I've been wearing, somebody gave me the orange ones. I've been wearing them pretty heavily, so that's good. It's going to be good to have a spare when those, uh, when they will wear out eventually. Those mm -hmm. are good. Thank you. And Chris. And Chris, and Chris is definitely going to enjoy them as well. Oh. Thank you. How is this going to work? Oh, you got threads galore. Oh, Melanie. Oh, look. Look. Oh, there's more. Yeah, for crocheting. It's all mine now. <laughs> it's all mine. How is this gonna make it? Oh, that is oh. a loom. Look in the bottom. And it's a lap loom. Oh, you oh can... look, you can make rugs and show the paper. Oh, look at this, guys. You can weave with that. Big rugs and things, afghans. That's, That's beautiful. Nice. Put that back in there. She's got here all kinds of yarns. There's a whole pack. And there's a big one. Look at that. Oh, look. What do you got here? That's a. What's this? Clear, clear stamps. stamp. Oh, it's stamp for a card. Yeah. Interesting. And cool. This... So you can put it in your stamp pad and put it on whatever you want. That's a, what do you call this? Squishy? Yeah. Silicone. Yeah, silicone. Oh, thank you! <laughs> I was looking for this. And there's a big pound of yarn. <laughs> Money can make a blanket. Oh, look, there's oh, books. Oh, the books. Oh, thank you so much. There's more. I can make it a lot. Yeah. Now. Well, thank you very much. I got to get back out to the cold. 
Melanie is going to do whatever Melanie does in here. <laughs> Probably crafting. I will leave you, Melanie, with the box. No, we want you to give Felix the box. Felix, no, that's the... mine. No? You want the box? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really going to do this. This one is the one I... Felix says thank you. Felix, say thank you. Felix, say thank you. See, baby's yeah. absolutely lazy. She doesn't come out much in the colder Felix weather like now. She's sleeping. She doesn't come out for a box. Hey everybody, this is Troy and... Melanie. From the do-it-yourself world and... The Off-Grid Project. Please subscribe and follow our daily videos as we strive to become self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget. Thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for watching.